Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harrison. This is my podcast. Do you ever wonder about the future? Well, you're in luck. This season we are studying future things revealed in the Word of God. I hope you're excited about that. Let's look forward to checking these things out. Let's fight the good fight of faith as we study future things. So take your Bibles open to Revelation 21. All right, so um, Revelation 21, we've, we've sort of looked at the, um, the overall picture. I think those overall pictures where you can see how God has working, how God has worked through time. Like, you know, here in the beginning, here's what new, uh, uh, heaven and earth look like. Here's what it's going to look like in the future and in the middle. And, and see the process helps you understand that God has a plan. And God has, uh, he's, not, he's not caught off guard. And, and God is uh, an awesome God. But here in uh, Revelation 21, as we're ending, looking at the end times, or the dispensation of the fullness of times, as Paul calls it, the dispensation of the fullness of times, dispensation of the fullness of times, that's in, if Paul calls it that in Ephesians 1, 9 through 11, and he says there that he shows us the mystery of, that God has now revealed the mystery of his will, that in the, when it's all said and done, he's going to gather everything together in, in Christ, both things which are in heaven and which are on earth. So both in Christ. What you're reading about in Revelation 21 is really the earth, right? I mean, it's a, it, we're, we're focused on the earth in this case. In fact, the heavens have already, by this period of time, have already been under God's control in Christ for over a thousand years. Because after the rapture, after the rapture and you know, a few years after that, not too long, in the middle of the tribulation, I believe, uh, when Satan and his angels are cast down out of heaven, their place is found no more. All right, and if you want to read, like sometimes people read in, if you want to read into that, what that means is, is that the body of Christ has taken that place because we have a heavenly calling. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 talks about us, um, that God's going to show the exceeding grace and his kindness towards us throughout all, you know, for the ages to come, for, uh, throughout all the ages to come. Uh, and, we're, uh, and we have a heavenly place, we're, we're seated in the heavenlies, we have a new body that's able to function in the heavenlies. That's, that's our purpose, that's our calling, that's the body of Christ. And so the heavens are clean. In fact, when you read through the book of Revelation, after Satan is cast out of heaven, there's all this rejoicing in the heavens. And there's, you know, there's salvation, there's good things and stuff like that. But John, the writer of the book of Revelation, is not, you know, he doesn't, he's not talking about the body of Christ in any fashion. It's just that's what's the backstory that he doesn't know about. Just like all through the Old Testament, you know, the, the issue of the mystery was not known. It was kept secret. You know, they didn't understand the body of Christ. They didn't understand salva- you know, the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the salvation of, your, of our sins. That was not really understood. When it talks about in, in Isaiah 53, about he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. That's talking about our, he's talking about a national issue. The nation of Israel has multiple, you know, when you see the word salvation, it has multiple meanings that are beyond body of Christ. Right? So when we think of salvation, what do you think of? What do you think of when you think of salvation? Being saved from hell, right? Think of our soul. When you read about salvation in the Old Testament, most times it's a physical deliverance. You know, David's talking about you know, you know, saving from our enemies, stuff like that. There's a physical deliverance. Uh, the nation has been, is to be saved. Okay, there's a national salvation. And that's really what Christ talked about most of the time. That's, that's what actually Isaiah 53 is talking about, is this national redemption. Uh, where, where God's going to bring the nation in. Now, in order to save the nation, individuals have to come, all right? But not every individual in that nation is going to make it, all right? There, I mean, uh, I, uh, Zechariah, uh, look at what, well, I told you to go to Revelation 21, right? Just go back to Matthew 3. I was just talking this with uh, Denny and Aaron the other day. I was talking to Aaron and then Denny Skyped in, so sort of a, so we uh, we had a, Skype session for about four hours. So in, in Matthew 3, um, talking about baptism here. So in Matthew 3, verse 11, uh, John, makes this, uh, John makes this statement. It says, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes are not, I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. And that's a two-stage system, uh, process. Being baptized... So, the word baptized does not mean water. The word baptized means to be identified. Really, you know, there's an identification. And what, what's going to be, they're going to be identified with God or with Christ 
through these two actions. The first one is baptized with the Holy Ghost, that they're identified with God by being baptized with the Holy Ghost, and, and that is, occurs at Pentecost. All right, so at Pentecost, they are being identified with God. So when the Holy Ghost, you know, for instance, when Peter says, repent and be baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, all right, that's what he says in Acts 2, all right? That's that first part of what Christ is doing. They're receiving this gift. They, they, but they, they repented. They realized they had, you know, as a nation, because he says, ye men of Israel, read what Acts 2 says. He says, you crucified, you killed the Lord of glory. And guess what? He's alive. And they go, what are we going to do? He says, well, here's what you need. You need to, you need to, you know, you need to get off, you know, get off, get out of that boat you're in. You need to repent. You need to refocus. You need to change, you know, change your mind. You need to repent of, of, of what, what the actions you had. And then, you know, that's a, there's a belief process in there, right? Okay. And then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, right? That identifies them as being part of this nation, of this new flock, this little flock, right? So what about, what about being baptized with fire? What is that referring to? He's going to baptize them with fire. He's going to, I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you, Israel, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What is that talking about? Talking about judgment. So go back to Zechariah. Zechariah, which is not too far behind Malachi, or Matthew, because it's Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew. So it's like, you know, couple pages away. Okay. Zechariah 13. Baptism means identification. So in Zechariah 13, verse, I think, 8, talk, and this is talking about the tribulation, right? The tribulation is a time of fire. It's a time of judgment. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through what? The fire. And that third part are believers. Look what it goes on to say. And will refine them as silver is refined, will try them as gold is refined, and they shall call on my name, and I will hear them, and I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, What? Lord is my God. There's a, you know, God God's going to say, like, You come through that process, and you are my people. I am your God. All right? So, anyway, so there's this identification, there's this, this idea that they're identified with the nation, with, with, with God in that case. Now go to Revelation chapter 21. So, is it, so once they do that, all right, so once they, do, once they go through that process, they are, they're identified as God's people. So, so anyway, so the, the tribulation, so like for us, the body of Christ, we're already, you know, when you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you were baptized into the body of Christ. God, the Holy Spirit, took you and put you in the body, right? Is that right? Was that water involved? No, it's just, it is, a, it, is a, it is a spiritual baptism. God took you, or God the Holy Spirit took you and identified you in Jesus Christ. And that's where you are. That's who you are. That's, that you are in Christ. And everything you have is because of that relationship of being in Christ. You are, you know, you are God's child, right? Are you a child of God? Okay. By the way, you know, how, you know, how is that, how is the case? Well, it says, you're children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, Right? When you're, when, uh, so God identified you in Christ and you're in Christ and you're now His and you are now His people, right? In fact, He takes up residence in you because you are, you know, you are His child, right? He put His Holy Spirit on you to demonstrate that you're His, right? And you're not going to lose that. You are identified in Jesus Christ completely, 100%, and you can't lose that, okay? That's who you are. You are God's people or God's individuals, right? That's who you are. Um, so anyway, so in, when it talks about in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he's going to put everything in Christ, the body of Christ. So the body, all right, so the body is in Christ, right? And we have a heavenly calling. That's where we're at. But then Israel is in Christ, right? They're in Christ. Not out in the body of Christ, right? See, it, being in Christ is not being in the body of Christ. That's different. The body of Christ is in Christ. Okay, that's a different thing. So we are the body, and we are in Christ. That happens at the moment of salvation. Israel as a nation, though, is a period of time. It's a seven-year process for that nation to be placed, in, placed into Christ. It is, a, it is a time of great tribulation. And in, what we read there in Zechariah 13, that's, that, that's at the second coming, when he's going through the land. All right, they've had this period of time to, to work things out. Okay, and, and those that are believers, they're left behind to go into the kingdom. 
right? At the, tribu- at the rapture, if you're left behind, you get to go into tribulation, right? If you're left behind at the second coming, you get to go into the kingdom, all right? Who's left behind at that point is righteous, right? Two at the well, one shall be taken, taken in judgment, right? Taken in judgment. Um, Revelation 21. So anyways, let's look here. So anyway, so I have this. So you have this. What is, anyway, so the, they're, they're in Christ, right? So, and, and so God has now, when you get to this point in Revelation 21, you are, there are in Christ, all right? Both the heaven. So here's the heavens with the body and with Israel. I know where I want to go. Revela- go to Romans 11. Go to Romans 11. That's the heaven and then the earth. The earth. So in Romans 11... You have the Apostle Paul talking about the beginning of the body of Christ, right? That is what, what actually, which is a, the setting aside of Israel. But then you find out that God has a, a purpose and a plan. So Re- Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I will not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So in this dispensation, in the age of grace, this particular instant in time that we're in right now, Israel as a nation has been, they are blinded, they are set aside as a nation. As a, as a nation, they cannot see. God, is, God has put them aside for a season. How is individuals, though? Any individual, right? There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. Okay, could come to Christ, right? So it's not about heritage. It's about you're either in Christ or not in Christ. But after this blindness ends, look what it says in verse 26. So after this fullness has been completed, when the Gentiles have reached the pinnacle of the rebellion and God deals with it, okay, then you have, you know, Christ comes back, sits up on this throne. Verse 26, and so all Israel shall be what? Saved. As is written, there shall come out of Zion to deliver and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. So all Israel shall be saved. Does that mean that every individual is going to be alive is going to be saved? No, just true Israel. Jesus Christ even said, right, just because you call you know, Abraham your father means nothing, okay? You know, that, that doesn't mean anything. Doesn't, you know, circumcision is, doesn't, is not the issue. You need to have a change of heart. The Apostle Paul talks about in Romans chapter 2 that he is a Jew, which is one not outwardly, and that circumcision is not one that is outward, it's circumcision of the heart, where God has taken that stony heart out of you and placed within that Jew a soft heart, a fleshly heart. You go back and read Ezekiel 36, 26, or Jeremiah thirty-one, thirty-one, which is the new covenant passage about the new covenant. God's going to take from them their stony heart, place within them a soft heart. He's going to put a spirit within them, cause them to walk in their way, in His ways. Okay, and He's going to, you know, they're going to be His people. Now, the new covenant includes also additional features. That sounds a little bit like what happens to a child of God, right? Today, right? When you trust the Lord Jesus Christ, God gives you a new life, a new heart, right? You got, you know, you're, He puts a spirit within you, right? But under the, on the second covenant, what God does to the nation of Israel, he says, and he says, I also promise you the land. So you're going to have the land. I'm going to put you back in the land, and you're going to, you know, and, the, and those types of things, right? That's the new covenant. So the idea is the new covenant promises this, the earth, right, for Israel. All right, so anyways, they are going to be, you know, God made a promise, verse 27, for this is my covenant, my promise unto them when I shall take away their sins. Notice that that's a future tense salvation, sin removal, right? So is that talking about their, they'll get the, uh, that moment in time when he comes back at the second coming, God takes away their, their sins so that their souls are taken care of. So Peter has to wait till then? No, Peter's righteous, right? Already, right? John, right? They are, I mean, they're all you know, Jews in this, in, this, in this paradigm. It's talking about as a nation, he's going to take away their sins. As a nation, they had rebelled against God. As a nation, you know, they went a whoring after other gods, is what God said. He's going he's gonna to make them white. He's going to make them pure. And that's, so it's a, it's a, that's a national redemption. Not something the body of Christ has. Right? You, know, the, the, you, don't, you don't need that. Right? You know, today, so, you know, so it's a national thing. All right, so anyway, so when you, when you read things, you need to make sure, or Scripture, make sure you understand the context, I guess, where you're at. But, but when you see words like salvation or stuff like that, be cautious. You know, um, what did I, say? I said to somebody the other day that, we, that uh, most, most people get into the habit of pollinizing uh, verses outside of Paul's epistles. 
and Paulinizing, I'm writing this way. And so you go back and you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, like for instance, you read, I mean, not that John 3.16 has not been used so many times to lead people to Jesus Christ, all right? Because then they use it in the context of, you know, what Paul says. But John 3.16 is, is, is a national type of situation. There is an individual situation too, but it's not related to the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Because that wasn't what was being preached for salvation. All right? Uh, and so anyway, so we pollenize it. We pick Paul's understanding of what he's sharing, and we read it back into uh, passages. And uh, you know, some people take it the whole way back in the Old Testament and read them in. So when I'm in the book of Revelation, and I'm telling you in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, I'm pollenizing it. Okay? I'm showing you, here's what Paul, you know, sort of you take what Paul's talking about, and you can see that behind the scenes, right? Happening with the body of Christ taking up our positions in heavenly places. Uh, anyway, I don't know if that made anything sense to you, but it made okay for me. So Revelation 21, let's go back there. So, so Revelation 21, so we're at this point of time where we're, we're talking about the earth being finally settled into what it needs to be. The great wine through a judgment has taken all kinds, of, taken care of uh, all the sinners, and now everybody is in God. And it says this here. So, verse three. Well, we saw we've already looked at twenty-one. Let's we'll start in verse one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. We talked about that last week. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So here comes New Jerusalem down. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and dwell with them, and they shall be what? His people, and God himself shall be with them and be their what? Be their God. So now everything is in Christ, in God. And he's now with them. Right? He's with them. I make the statement, and I want to make sure, I was just thinking about this the other day, because sometimes we say things, and, you know, and, we're, and, and, I, and I was thinking about, you know, what does that mean when we say that God cannot be in the presence of sin? I thought about that. So it means that God can't handle it? Because Jesus Christ is, right? I mean, he's, he's, he is God, right? In the express image of God. So what, because you know, here now God's coming, because God himself, God the Father, is coming here. Well, it has to do with that actually sinners can't be in the presence of a righteous God. His glory would just vaporize you. Remember Isaiah? When he stood there and he's on, he says, you know, I can't, how can I be here? I'm a sinner in the presence of God, right? And, God, and, and you know, Daniel, there was some, some situation like that. The idea is that God's glory would just vaporize unredeemed man. So God, and so in the same way, for, I guess, for the angels, right? So God steps outside. The universe really is a, is a gracious act, okay? Because His presence. So, if you were to be before, before God or see God, and when in Ezekiel or uh, Exodus thirty-three, God's God Himself, God the Father, passes before Moses. All right, and what God does, He shields him in the in the in the cleft of the rock. And he says, "You can't see me face face to face, or, or or you'll die. So I'll let you see my hinder parts. I'll see the after effects of as I pass through." I read Ezekiel 33 there, just the first few verses, you'll see it. Or maybe it's the end of 32, end of 32, uh, 33. So it's, it's God's glory. So anyway, so when I say that, it's not that God's limited. It's just that it's God's just, you know, he, he, has, he, he wants his creation to reign with him. And so he's dealing, he knows it's going to happen. So he, he, he takes the shot out. Well, he's coming back, right? Verse 4 of Revelation 21. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall be there any more pain. Well, it's not going to be a great day. Okay? Now, the awesome thing is you've been doing this for a thousand years by this period of time. By the time this verse is true on the earth, there's been no more death, no more crying, no more pain for you or I as members of the body of Christ because we're, we're already seated in the heavenlies. We're already reigning with Christ in the heavenly places. But the earth is still going through a redemption, redemption phase to deal with things. Because the earth is not made up of just Israel. It's Israel and then there's the nations. And God's dealing with, the, you know, so he dealt with the nation. Now that nation is a nation of priests. All right. And they are dealing now with, God's dealing with the rest of humanity for a thousand years. Okay. Verse 5. 
And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said, Ah, it is, it is done. I pointed out last time. It is done. You know, everything's in, in, in God, in Christ. It's, it's finished. It's the way it ought to be. It's the way it was. And it is again. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. Okay, notice this, verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So, he's ref- so, so anyways, but that verse is in the context of what John has shared, right? So it's, a back, it's like future things, but he that overcometh shall, shall drink of the fountain of the water of life freely, or he'll, he'll be, I'll be his God. So what's that mean to be overcoming? We've looked at that before. Now, overcoming does not mean lasting to the end of the tribulation, lasting to the end of the millennium. I mean, the, the nation of Israel doesn't have to last to the end, right? I mean, they're all righteous. They're all holy during the millennium, all right? In Revelation chapter 12, to me, it's a tr- Revelation 12 has so much truth in it that is key. It's interesting, but uh, sometimes certain, certain chapters just like, wow, there's like, this key unlocks this, this key unlocks this. Revelation 12, verse 11. So how do you overcome? Because right? how, how, you know, the book of Revelation is written to the nation of Israel who's going to go through tribulation, right? It's not after the fact. You know, John is being told to write certain things. They're going to go through tribulation. Verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, so it's through Christ, right? By the word of their testimony, right? That basically they, they, uh, they, uh, they, they state, you know, stated their believers or whatever, and they loved not their lives, what? Unto the death. So the issue is, you know, life and death didn't matter. They, they stay true to God, right? Stay true to God. Let me just read a few passages to you about this new city. Well, let's talk about that overcoming first part. So if we go back to Revelation 2. So the first uh, chapters 2 and 3, the class just vaporizes here in the last 10 minutes. So. Notice it much more with the tables. So I don't usually notice as much without that. Look at Revelation 2. And, and there's, the word overcometh is used a bunch, all right? Uh, in this uh, in this passage, so Revelation two verse seven. These are these seven churches, all right, which are uh, not church ages, but I think seven seven churches that are to- uh, uh, around at the beginning, uh, at this beginning of time of the tribulation or whatever. Verse seven: He that hath an ear, let him hear what, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. All right. So if, so if you if you make it. I mean, basically, you love lot your lives to the death. You know, you get to do that. Uh, chapter, uh, verse um, 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear uh, what the Spirit saith unto churches. He that overcometh shall not be heard of what? The second death. Because your name is going to be written down, right? You're not going to experience the second death. Uh, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit... These are you know, another church. Saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And will give him a whole a white stone, and in a stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, say he that receiveth it. Don't understand that real well, but just part of getting through the tribulation, really. Verse twenty six. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over what? The nations. They're gonna be able to rule with Christ. Okay, read what it says when Christ, at the second coming. In verse chapter twenty, they're gonna reign with Jesus Christ. Chapter three, verse five. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. They all related to the same thing, right? Basically getting into the kingdom, being part of that nation. Verse 12 of chapter 3. Him that overcometh will I make a, a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. I will write unto, upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is what? The Jerusalem cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. The issue is they're going to be part of part, you know, going to be part of the temple of God. They're going to be in there. That's talking about the holy city, about New Jerusalem. Verse twenty-one of Revelation three: To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame. And how did Christ overcame? Well, he loved not his life to the death. All right, he did it for others. All right. So if you take a look at the judgments of the nations and stuff like that, you've did it to the least of these, my brethren. It's about others being other centered. What's it about in the body of Christ? I mean, how do you get rewarded? You don't have to overcome because you are in Christ and Christ overcame. So 
technically. You're an overcomer in Christ. But what, Christ, what Paul says, you're actually a super conqueror, a super overcomer uh, in, in, in Romans chapter 8. And that uh, you don't have to, you know, we, are, we, are not, we cannot be separated from the love of Jesus Christ, which is in, or the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ. Because you're in Christ. What God's promising the nation Israel, that you're going to be in my presence with me totally forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Just like you are in Christ and will be with God forever and ever and ever and ever. But the relationship's slightly different. He's your head. He's their king. And, that, and that's a totally different relationship. Okay, one is a, you know, so in the, at my university, I, uh, we have different, you know, people, people run departments or divisions with different leadership styles, right? You can have a kingly orientation, Right, so you have kings, and then you have you know the next level, and then the next level, and the next level, and the new faculty come in down here. All right, and if anything trickles down to them, that happens, and that happens on one of the floors in my department, in my building. This hierarchical thing. So the new faculty are like treated like third-class citizens, and the faculty have been there for 25 years. They they reign supreme, right? Or you can be in my department, which I work as as a headship situation, right? where there's a relationship for everybody. It's pretty flat, right? It's pretty flat what we do. And the new guys are just as valuable as the guys who have been there for 25 years. Right? And there's a very different style. And, and uh, it's quite noticeable. Well, the head of the body of Christ is like that. For instance, is there any part of your body that's less important than any other part of your body? You know, just, you know, just if you think your pinky toe isn't too big of a deal, you know, stub it, okay? The rest of the body thinks it's a pretty big deal then all of a sudden, right? As long as your body, I mean, you don't, you're fine when everything's working fine, right? Right, when everything's working fine, everybody's happy, your fingers, hands, you know, head and shoulders, knees and toes, awesome, right? That's all, we're all happy. But when some things I've missed, then the rest of the body worries about it. The rest of the body is concerned for it. The rest of the body focuses on it to try to heal it because it's just as important in every other part of the body. Now, there are, there are parts of the body who differ different things, and within those structures, there's different sort of authority. But how, what good is the heart if there is no blood? What good is the heart if there are no veins and arteries? What, good, what purpose does the heart have if there's not muscle tissue? Or, or, or what per, you know, can, the, can the heart work without the lungs? Well, put a machine on you, it can. But, okay, but, but without that, okay, it can't, right? It's all interconnected, and everything's just as important as everything else. That's a very different structure. You, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a king structure, you can lose a pawn, right? That's why you play chess. In fact, you sacrifice others for the sake of others. But in a body structure, that's not the way. It's a different thing. So, so, the, 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 in, in, so, in this, so what God is saying, when you, when you get to... Am I out of time? The doors open early. When we get when we get to the we are when we get to the to, to the nation of Israel. When you get into the new heaven and new earth, God is raising them to a different structure. Okay, during the millennium, there's this hierarchical structure, but now there's a different structure. They can come in and they go out. Israel as a nation, you know, for, you know, for instance, during the king during the millennium, who's king of the earth? Well, no, well, king of Israel. Sorry, king of the earth is Christ. And then David. He's king of Israel, okay? And then who's, who's the kings who run each of the tribes? There's 12 of them. 12 apostles. They call, he has sort of, I said 12 thrones. They don't call them kings, but they're sitting on 12 thrones, right? right? So judging, the 12, <laughs> judging the 12 tribes of Israel, right? I heard some clicking. Okay. So, and, and, then you have, and then you have the nation of Israel, who is a nation of what? Priests. And then you have believers who aren't part of the nation of Israel, all right, who came through the millennium, Okay. Okay, and we come through the, uh, the tribulation, right? Countless numbers of them, all of which are part of God's program. But there's a structure. Those who are of Israel are getting special places in the land. There, there are special places in the land. Well, when you get to here, it's whoever overcomes, all right? They're in the city. They don't, it says there, you know, verse 12, it says, uh, He that overcometh will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall be no more out. Okay, he's not going to go, you know, he's not out there. He's with me always. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God. It's probably the, you know, your passport, which, which is New Jerusalem. Okay, your passport and your visa never expires. You're able to come, whatever we got. Okay, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him my new name. That's everybody. There's a, there's a new level on the earth. 
But there's still folks that have to have right to enter into the city, and that's what I'll talk about next time, right? There's still, there's still another level, right? But those who are in Christ are all flat, right? That is, they're all, they all have access to God. During the millennium, no. But during the new heaven, new earth, they have access. Everybody, every, every believer. So, you know, that Israel structure goes from like this to like this on how I have access. So David, John, all those apostles, you know, every Jew, every Gentile that, that you know, came, you know, is saved, that's on the earth, they all have access to God, all right? Just like you have access to God right now. You know, the moment you, you, moment you say, Lord, you have access, right? Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your loving grace. We thank you, Lord, for these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith, and God's best to you. Thank you.